Maybe the question we should ask is not, why is church history important? The question we should actually ask is, why would we ever think it wasn't important? The modern attitude that we have, that history is not important, is just that. It's a modern attitude. It's exceptional in the history of humanity. Martin Luther was born November the 10th in the year of 1483, where it also been located in the region of Prussian Saxony and died at the age of 63 in 1546 February 18th and the 2nd of July 1505 he was overtaken like a thunderstorm for help he yelled so and I become a monk he kept his vow then in the summer of that year he entered the Augustinian convent with tears and penitence for all of his wrong ways didn't find peace in his past exercises terrified of a holy God that was righteous but received wise counsel from an old monk by the name of Johann von Staupitz reminds him of the forgiveness of sins an article found in the Apostles Creed that was saved by grace apart from deeds then in 1507 encouraged him to enter the priesthood so he brought him to Wittenberg to take to the green doctor of divinity to preach then after he studied all day the scripture immersed himself in St. Paul's epistles Luther is drawn by conviction of the abuse of indulgences that he witnessed notice the great corruption of Rome Leo X, a presumptuous pope Is bankrupt but wants to continue Constructing a dome with St. Peter To pay off his debts and curb rewards And finish his project by decorating his wall So he strikes a deal with Albrecht Who wants a third bishop if he can't Cause against church law So he takes a loan from the Fugas in Augsburg So he can pay the pope for exemption Then the pope would grant our bishop Albrecht permission to sell indulgences To pay off the interest and the Pope allows Albrecht to raise an indulgence on his territory so that he can give some of the money to the Fugas to pay off capital on the loan and some of the money goes to the Pope. The Pope wins both ways. It's great being Pope at the start of the 16th century. You set the rules and you win both ways. The Pope's problem is solved. He gets the money to pay off the debts incurred by his war and by hiring Michelangelo to decorate St. Peter's. And Albrecht's problem is solved, he gets the third bishopric and all of the lucrative tax deals that that will involve. Hey yo, as we consider St. Peter's Dome, it's once the glorious shame of papal Rome bit over the bones of the Galilean fishermen with the proceeds from the sales of indulgences. And indulgences so unique to the Roman church and known to the Greek and Latin fathers if you were to search. Wait a minute, what are indulgences exactly? That's a good question, I am glad that you asked me. It's remission of punishment of sin in Latin on the condition of penitence and payment of money to the bishop, archbishop, or pope. That's ridiculous, you gotta be kidding. Is it Nope. No, just go read church history, bro. They commissioned the preacher, Tetzel. He sold indulgences throughout Germany. Known for a famous statement, let me read. And I quote, when a coin's in a car for rings, he said his soul from Purgatory Springs. So when October 31st, 1517, Luther posted his 95 theses. And Luther, in 1517, he will nail up this poster that lists a series of his objections to what's going on. It's called the 95 Theses. He did it on October the 31st and it's often regarded as the day that the Reformation began. Except Luther didn't regard it that way. Luther years later says, when I did that thing about indulgences, he said, I was the most insane follower of the Pope. Luther gets concerned because his parishioners are going over and not that they're being sold indulgences, but he thinks they're being sold indulgences with the wrong understanding of what they are calls into question and saying and Luther's mentality in 1517 is if only the Pope knows what's going on he'll close it down